That's why we have to get out. It is your duty, parents, it is your duty to cut off every influence, to break up every habit, to sunder every tie that keeps you from the most free, open, and hearty committal of yourselves and your family to God. Cut them off. How do you cut them off? Get to the country. This is a collaboration of both the Apocalypse Channel along with Living Manna Ministries. And I hope you've been able to see all of what we've experienced this past week, either live and in person or, of course, on the web. And, um, and you have the website. It's www apocalypsechannel.tv okay now we're gonna give like a quick roll call first of all those that are here live welcome yay thank you for coming <laughs> now we have I'm not gonna run off all of the countries around the world because it's literally what a world wide web so not only is the United States we've got the United Kingdom we've got Canada we've got Aruba Trinidad Tobago Barbados we've got of course the Virgin Islands Jamaica Puerto Rico we've got Bermuda Guyana Switzerland Brazil Rwanda Netherlands and uh, Anguilla we, okay we've got New Zealand and it just goes on and on but we are so happy and blessed to have you with us and we hope you are blessed with everything that you are learning so of course this is our question and answer segment and it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a blessing because not only do I have whoo, a lot of questions we have some from our live audience that we've already collected we have some from our email that people have sent in from literally, I mean, literally around the world. And we're going to be interactive. And if I can read it, and I got the, I call it the air traffic controller thing from Brother Bridges. So we're going to try to take live questions from our website on the chat board. So if you're watching via the um, live stream, that's www.apocalypsechannel.tv. If you're on that one, then we can see your questions, and I will try to remember to look so I can read that also, okay? Now, it gets, oh, by the way, my name is Melissa, so I'm glad to be with you. Now, we're going to introduce to you our distinguished panel of God-trained experts. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. We will start on this end and just say your name and what your background is. My name is my name is Kenneth Dawkins, and uh, I have a small farm, about ten acres, and I grow organically grown produce and well vegetables, fruit, culinary. Herbs. So you're our food expert. Uh, we say agriculture. Agriculture, okay, agriculture. okay. <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, and our little farm is called uh, we call it Coo Valley Farm. Okay, excellent. So thank you, and you. My name is Soyla Van Alstein, and um, our ministry is Shepherd's Path Ministries, and we deal uh, with food preservation, canning, dehydrating, and the like. Okay. Amen. My name is Brother Elvin Bridges, and I have a ministry, of course, Living Man of Ministries, and we uh, promote and promulgate all aspects of the Three Angels messages, specifically for today's purposes. I guess you could say my, if you want to say expertise, by God's grace, is the science of leaving the cities. Amen. My name is Diana McCoy, and we have Soul We Soul Ministries, uh, my mother and myself, and uh, just trying to show people practical ways of um, the dress reform. My name is Horace Franklin, and I'm here to uh, talk about the off-grid living. And I'm Brother Moses Mason. I am just here. <laughs> We're with Apocalypse Ministries, of course, along with my wife, Maggie Mason, and my son, Marcus Mason, and we are just here to try to prepare a people to stand true to God when this investigator's judgment passes from the dead to the living. Amen. That's what this meeting is all about. Amen. Amen. Okay, yes. Um, we're going to open with the word of prayer, so Brother Mason, if you would. Okay, let us pray at this time. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, again, we come before thy righteous and holy throne. Just thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us thus far. It's been a blessing. It's been a tremendous blessing. And as we just ask, Lord, that you will continue to be with us now as we go into this question and answer session. Lord, we ask that questions will be answered that will help people to make decisions to follow the every step of the way. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. Okay, just a few um, housekeeping notes. Um, the white mic we will share between the three of the three of you, and then the red one will be the three of you. And um, and you'll hear the question, so you'll know if that's kind of your specialty or not. And um, be kind of brief and you know concise. Let the Holy Spirit lead. And you know, so we want to get because we have a lot of questions and they're really good ones. All right, we're going to start with this one. It's it's. Um, I have been watching the Apocalypse Channel TV for three weeks now and love it. Um, thank you for the beautiful blessing. As a Seventh-day Adventist for the past 44 years, I've been asleep throughout most of it. I praise God for the awakening, and I am <laughs> and I am a thirsty sponge waiting for more. May God continue to protect and guide each of you as you spread his message. Please send me cards so that I can share the word. And I'm going to let you elaborate on that one. This is the card that she's making reference to, and these cards will be going out on... I say Monday, Tuesday next week, and it's going to go out with a letter telling you how to distribute these cards. And along with these cards, those that have requested cards, you're also going to get our present, our newsletter, along with a DVD. God, listen, this is serious. God needs an army of workers everywhere. And it's time for all of you that are viewing on channel, as well as all of those that are local here in the studio, let's get serious. We're at the end. And so these cards are designed for you to hand out to other Adventists. There's a question that should we uh, introduce non-Adventists to this channel. This is an Adventist channel. It really won't be appropriate for non-Adventists because they just won't understand what's there. Unless you know that the person you are given it to is someone that you've been studying with and kind of enlighten them. Otherwise, it's going to be Greek to them. They won't know what a sanctuary, they won't know any of that. But there's a time coming when those people are going to be introduced to this message as well. But the cards are designed to give to Adventists to wake up the lost sheep in mm -hmm. of the house of Israel. And so we want you to be foot soldiers, we all foot soldiers, mm -hmm. to drive people to this uh, present truth channel that is designed to prepare a people to stand true to God when this investigative judgment passes from the dead to living. That's what it's all about, saints. Amen. Okay. Our first question, this one is from our email, and it says, I am married, we are praying for a few, or we've been praying for a few months already, so the Lord can open the way for us to move into the country, but we have some problems. I still have some school loans to pay back, and it's a lot of money. We live in Aruba without places like the prophet have, has told us. All the other islands around us are too small, and people can reach us easily if they want to, but the most important is that we do not have the rural space to build character the way God wants to build it. We are financially not strong to just buy a country home and live if we move to America, Europe, or Asia. At the same time, we already for weeks and months have a very strong impression on our hearts that we need to leave as soon as possible, and we believe it's from the Lord. But where to go is our question, because the when question is not the issue. We want it to be already in the country. We believe we are a generation that is too too late for character building. But knowing these facts does not stop us. The Lord can do miracles, so we need your counsel and guidance in what and how to do. Start packing. Start packing. I would say, first of all, it's never too late. Um, the Lord, first of all, you recognize that you need to leave the city and you're willing to leave. That's number one. Number two, the time in terms of history, Earth's history right now in terms of prophecy tells us, and you just uh, answered the question in the question, the answer, the question of when, we, need, we know we need to be out now. It should have been out 112 years ago. Um, just start packing and start praying again. I, I, and I'm going to say this respectfully. I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for those who aren't sure what they should be doing because the bottom line is, and we, we uh, studied this on Sunday night, we need, it's all about faith. If you really want to go, God will lead you out. He will lead you out. Start packing, put your feet in the Red Sea, put your feet in the Jordan River, and watch the Lord part it. If you move your right arm, the Lord will move his. That's a guarantee. That's a promise from the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Read Desire of Ages, page 668. Paragraph one, slowly and prayerfully and claim it and watch the Lord make it work a miracle. 
And now it might not happen in the time that you want it to happen, but God will begin to work his purposes out on your behalf. Amen. Amen. And from our um, live board from the website, we have a comment, actually, or just a reference I'd like to share. Um, her name is Meta, M-E-T-A, and she quotes in regards to this question, the Madison School, November 14, 1906 and 16, and Mind Character Personality, 341.3. So you can look at that also. All right, question from our live audience. Where do I need to begin preparing for and how do I prepare for my country move, both spiritually as well as physically? Signed, P. Grove. Spiritually and physically. Okay. You get the white one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we have to all share. Amen. <laughs> okay, you guys can hear me mm -hmm. through the mic? Mm -hmm. Okay, amen. Okay, amen. Uh, again, start packing. You have to make the first move. Many people are waiting for a country home to fall out of the sky, and that's not the way it's going to happen. I'm going to mention this in our testimony in a little while, but it took us four and a half years to get back to the country. We look back and we re believe that we weren't as ready as we thought we were. So God has to prepare us before we leave to be in the position to be able to have him take us out. It was faith. We weren't where we needed to be in terms of the faith issue, the faith question. Once we started exercising faith, and Sister White is very clear about this, you can believe in faith, you can believe Hebrews chapter 11, but if you're not exercising it, it does no one any good, yourself, your family, anybody else. So you have to exercise that faith by stepping out on faith and begin to do the things which will tell God, okay, now I see your family serious, now I can begin working on your behalf. It's a really simple principle, it's just a matter of implementing that principle. Amen. Um, you have to start looking. Uh, my wife and I uh, started looking for land. We we just we drove every, every Sunday. We was driving out looking for land. We drove everywhere. Uh, we had some friends, the Hutchinsons at the time. We used to get in the car, all four of us, and just drive and look and drive and look. And I'll be honest with you. You hear people say this, but I'm telling you, we're living examples of the fact that we look for land with no money. Mm. I'm literally, no money. Mm. And when we found, when God gave, and that's another story, maybe we can do it. When we really found the land, when God gave us, showed us the land, we had no money. I, I mean, I'm, and I wrote a $200 earnest check with nothing in the bank to back it up. Mm. But, Praise God, the land that God showed us, we are sitting on right now. This, this media center is sitting on that land. That's where we are right now. Amen. And so I, and I know God did it. Mm -hmm. I can, we can claim nothing, absolutely, positively nothing. God did it all. Amen. Okay, from our, okay, from our chat board at apocalypsechannel.tv, um, someone says, her name is actually Melissa, <laughs> she says, if there is a wellspring on the property, what do I do with it for water? It runs in the winter and sits in the summer. Well, if you're lucky enough to have a spring, if you're lucky enough to have a spring on the property, uh, that's a good thing. You just uh, clean it out. Amen. You got to clean it. And you put some gravel down so that the water, you, you'll have fresh water coming in, and you just pipe that into the house wherever, you, wherever you're living. And, uh, and you got a good water supply. You don't have to dig a well or any of that, uh, go through all of that expense. Uh, that's what I would suggest. Okay, thank you. Let me, let me add to that, too. We, our property, we own spring water. And sometimes it just, it's just gushing out water. But that comes in dry season when it's just a, a trickle of water. But a, a finger of water continually running will fill up a thousand gallon tank and keep it filled. Just a finger of water continually running. So if you just got a continual running water, then you, you're good to go. Okay, thank you. Um, Brother Dawkins, what about food? dealing with agriculture, gardening, the deer, and living in an area where the ground is mostly clay. Okay, um, we'll address the deer 
first. We address the deer first. Um, now, normally, if you have deer in the area and you plant a garden, they're going to eat just like you eat. <laughs> but to get rid of that problem, um, from everything that I've learned, I've, I've heard people say they put soap, uh, hair, and all these different things, and it'll work for a little while. But the best thing to do is to get fencing put up. And it has to be at least eight feet tall. Absolutely. If it's less than eight feet tall, a deer can jump over it like it's not even there. So uh, fencing, I would say. Fencing, and then at the bottom of it, uh, while we're talking about fencing, uh, we got those things called rabbit. And you want to uh, put a, a two by four or something around the bottom and make sure it's on the ground and then uh, nail it at the bottom so you can stop the predator from coming in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the clay? <laughs> oh, and, and the second one, uh, uh, clay. Um, if you have rock or if you have clay and you can't get stuff growing in the soil, then what I suggest is do raised bed. Amen. Mm. And then you, you uh, put your, your compost on the top, uh, get you some two by four, uh, two by six, I think, preferably because it's a little deeper, and then grow on top of the soil. And you can grow on top of the soil just as well as you can on the bottom. Oh, is that like the box mm -hmm. thing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just like a box. Amen. All right. This one is from our email. It says, I want to thank you for your ministries, Apocalypse Ministries and Living Manna Ministries. I live in Seattle, Washington. I've been praying about moving away from the city. So five years ago, we bought 13 acres in Fiji and a house on it. I have a conflict with my wife every time I bring up the subject of moving to Fiji. I'm trying to do everything I can do with the leading of the Holy Spirit to get my family out to prepare them for what is coming. Our daughter will finish high school next year in May. I want to do something now while I'll still have the means to do it before it gets too hard to get out. Please pray for me. Is there any suggestions or comments what to do next? Thank you, Prayerful in Seattle. When I read that question, I assumed that the person was making reference to what should I do in order to convince my wife? That's what I, that's what I saw. Now, if, I, if that's what he's saying, then I'm going to, my suggestion would be he need to really pray for his wife to be able to, the Lord would open our eyes and able to see the necessity of getting out. Mm -hmm. uh, just watching this series this week should convince anyone that of the necessity to move out. Amen. I'm so glad we heard Fiji because it kind of uh, reinforces what I said a few minutes ago about the Tennessee issue. It's a big world, and God is impressing people to move everywhere. I've, we've talked to a lot of people almost every day, every other day. People are moving to different states all over the place. In fact, there's a brother here. My brother starts from Nevada. He said that he, he knows seven families that have recently, recently left that area in Nevada and have moved, all moved to Arkansas. Hmm. So there's country property all over the globe, in, 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 in addition to being here in the United States. So don't limit God. If he impresses you for whatever reason he sees fit to go somewhere, where maybe the place you least expect to go. Mm -hmm. But that's, we're in a place where we didn't expect to be. Okay. We figured Tennessee, but not the part of Tennessee where he planted us. So just be open-minded because God has a plan for you that you may not even know about. A thousand different plans. Amen. Amen. Okay, this one. Um, Sister Soila, how will we survive our crops if our crops fail and we can't buy and sell? Should I stockpile food? And if so, how? What do I do? Um, first of all, I can tell you a little bit of what our family has done. Um, uh, your garden's failing. Uh, right now uh, is the opportunity where you can start stockpiling on dry goods, seasonings, um, whole grains, and um, 
vegetables as best that you can through your garden. Whatever you have an abundance of at this particular time, store as much as you can while you can. Mm. And um, for us, we have our garden, but we also go to the farmer's markets. We go to um, big box stores. I will, uh, for instance, I, when I did the canning uh, demonstration with string beans, uh, we can our own string beans, but when I'm finished, when the season has ended for the fall growing season, that's when I uh, go to the grocery store and I'll start stocking up on canned green beans. And I try to get dates that are um, dated for three or four years on the cans, even though they're not as healthy. But it's always good to have a surplus rather than none at all. Mm -hmm. So start if you're, so that if your garden fails for whatever reason, if you have an abundance of one vegetable versus another, if by the ending of your growing season you go into the stores and you start stockpiling them from the farmer's markets, then you'll always be ahead and not behind. Okay. And to piggyback from our chat board, someone wants to know, how much food is needed for a family of six? And that can be the, between the two of you. Well, I would say, you said how much food is needed for a family yeah. of, of six. six? Yes, sir. And I would say this, uh, this is just my experiences in gardening. Um, you can get a very small space, say maybe uh, a 30 by 30 space, just a small space. And if you plan it, and if you plan it, you can have enough food in that space for 10 or 12 families year round. So it, it just comes to uh, planning, planting, harvesting, and when you finish harvesting that, plant again. Mm. And you'll have enough food year round. I don't, I'm not sure what area they're in mm -hmm. and uh, how long the growing season is, mm -hmm. but you should be able to farm a small space year-round and provide food for a lot of people. Okay, thank you. This question is regarding dress, Sister Diana McCoy. What is dress reform? Do I have to wear bonnets, black, gray, solid colors, and boxy dresses? <laughs> and this is a two-part question, so when you finish that, I got another one. Okay. Um, bonnets. No, you do not have to wear bonnets. Um, what, um, what is, we talked about, well, Sister Bridges talked about modest dressing. And um, it is not what the world is showing, but it is what is acceptable to the Lord. And uh, women need to cover up. I know that there's uh, dress reform also for the men, because sometimes men wear things that are very revealing. And that is what we're trying to um, to change and to make sure that people are not revealing, uh, showing themselves. The skirts should be at a full, at a um, decent length, um, not having the arms exposed, the chest exposed. And there's so many things that you can do. You don't have to wear black, even though black is my favorite color. There's so many things that I can do with black, as you can see. So, um, Dress reform is not the bonnet wearing and the, the big dresses and, you know, um, you can look very um, appealing uh, with dress reform. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And you answered the second question because they were saying, well, what about men and dress reform and what is inappropriate as far as men are concerned? Okay. This one is from our email. I am enjoying the presentations of Out of the Cities webinar. Thank you so much. I am single, middle-aged, and ready to move to begin that character development and obedience to God's word. But as I wait for my Adam, I'm alone. So <laughs> what do I do and how do I do it? Praying for my Adam in the country. <laughs> Who wants that one? <laughs> I can answer that. I don't have an Adam. Um, I do have a mother. Um, my son did uh, live with us, but he's not um, living with us anymore. But we don't wait for an Adam. We don't wait for an Eve. We allow God to lead us. And the question earlier when um, the person was saying, what do we do? We 
had to say we were going to put feet upon our faith. Mm. And at times you might not have the funds, you might not know exactly where you want to go, but the Lord will show you. And sometimes it means that you will have to rent, uh, which we did when we moved from Chicago. We rented for many years mm -hmm. until the Lord blessed us with the country home that we have. So you don't wait for that Adam, but you just move as the Lord directs you. Amen. Just briefly, and that, first of all, that's an excellent, excellent question. We get a lot of questions from people with real life situations and real life scenarios. I'm, I'm 90 years old. Uh, I'm the only Adventist believer in my, in my family. I want to get to the country. Uh, who do I talk to? Can I, can I live with somebody, a family who might have a home already? Uh, there are situations where you have an older couple who might have the means but may not have the strength anymore, where you have younger folk that are medical missionary trained and don't have the means, but they have the strong back. Wow. So we can, what, what I want to do and what we're planning on doing as a ministry is to s implement some type of networking system where people can get together, maybe on a website. Again, we're formulating in our minds right now as we speak, where we can get together and try to, because we have to be unified. That's very important. And we have so many people who are single, widowed, uh, divorced, whatever the situation may be, and they're trying to find a situation that the Lord can put them in where they can be a blessing to others. Amen. So, again, that's a topic we could talk about for a long time. But just put that, putting that out there, we have to create some kind of forum where people can discuss what their need is and we, by with the Lord's help, can try to have it filled. Amen. Amen. Okay. And from our message board again, and if you're just tuning in, of course, well, if you're telling someone else, the website is www.apocalypsechannel.tv. And from that site, let me see, uh, it says, I'm a widow and have a raw piece of land. How would you suggest I start the off-the-grid process? Is it easy to go off the grid once you have been on the grid? You say, is it is easy, it easy to um, go, off go off the grid once you've been on the grid? Well, it's, you have to have a, you have to pray and ask God to give you the mindset uh, to live off grid because you're used to, like my wife said, flipping switches and turning, turning lights yeah. on anytime. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you have to train yourself that uh, you're not going to have that s those switches out there as available as you, you did in, in the cities, uh, like Atlanta and, and places like that. But as far as being difficult, you just pray and ask God to, uh, to show you the, you the way that you should live, and um, he's faithful. Okay, amen. Yeah, he'll do it. Okay, and Brother Bridges? Oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. All right. What they have done is, is an excellent uh, preparation for being off grid. It's excellent. I mean, it's mind boggling what they have done. But I, I want to tell the people out there that it, this is called the time of trouble. You know what that means? <laughs> You're going to have trouble. <laughs> We're going to have trouble, saints. So we've got to prepare ourselves mentally for war. This is war. And I, I tell people, I came up in a time of trouble. I was born in 1945. No running water. No electricity. No indoor plumbing. Cook stove, wood cook stove. You had to walk for half a mile to get some water. You ate out the garden. Only thing you went, only thing you went to town to buy was fat back meat. <laughs> You know it. Now listen, don't act like you've been having this all your life. That fat me, is that right, brother? Because you season everything with that fat back. So we, I came up in, in that environment. Of course, we didn't have no, that the, the stress is going to be associated with this one. We didn't have that stress at that time. But we're going to have stress with it this time as well. Mm. So this is the time of trouble that's coming. So even as we prepare physically, we need to prepare mentally mm -hmm. as well. Amen. Let me say this real quick, sister, just as a little humble reminder. Every question that's being asked, the Lord can answer it. Amen. We're, all we are is just under shepherds. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
just want to put that out there. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for our under shepherds. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, um, this is a quick question for you, um, Brother Bridges. Uh, can you please repeat the page in Desire of Ages to read? You recall that? And also, um, if you would tell me the chapter, that would be helpful. It's page 668, paragraph 1. The entire paragraph. I can't call the name of the chapter at this time. Maybe somebody has a Desire of Ages or a phone. They can look real quick. Okay. But it's, it's page 668, paragraph 1. Beautiful promise. Okay. And we're going to have that chapter name in just a second. I see my brother looking it up back there. Okay, so maybe, while maybe in a few minutes. Okay, so while he's looking it up, um, here's one from our live audience. I know some people that were excited and thought they were prepared to move to the country, but got there and eventually they packed up and moved back. Why? How can I keep this from happening to me? Signed, I want to stay on the wall. <laughs> I like that. Amen. <laughs> sentinel. Sentinel. Uh, every situation is different. We had a situation where we moved out. We were, we were firm. We were there for a little over a year, but we had something come up we didn't even expect. It was an unexpected family illness. Just blindsided us completely. So we made a very tough, it was a, we wrestled with the Lord for weeks. And we finally concluded we had to go back to California for, for a season. We said, well, we'll get back maybe six months, a year from now, we'll be back in the country. But it took four and a half years. And I'm going to talk about that during the testimony. But um, I hear that a lot. A lot of families move to the country. They're not really ready. Mm. I believe the preparation, the most important preparation is spiritual. That's the most important. That is the forerunner for everything else. Everything follows that. So we believed at that time we were ready spiritually. Maybe we weren't. Won't. Only the, weren't. Only the God, the Lord knows. But people have different reasons why they get out. Then they have to go back. And unfortunately, in most cases, when they go back, they never return to the country. That's from my ex personal experience hearing people give their test. They never get back out to the country. So you have to be ready. And I want to add a little bit more to that. A lot of people move out into the country and they think about getting off the grid time they get out there. I would say, first, just get to the country. <laughs> have electricity, have central heating and cooling. Uh -huh. And that gets you started. And then, because in the city you have the same thing. And when you get this move to the country, you still have electricity, have central heating and cooling and, and everything. And then from there, pray and ask the Lord how to get you to the place that you need to be. But I say first, go to the country. Okay. Now, from our uh, chat board online, Rose wants to know, she says, a lot of people are discouraged because there is um, a situation with no money. Please, would you have Elder Mason give his testimony to encourage us? The testimony would be too long at this point in time, but let me just say this much. My wife and I look for land, literally look for land, along with the Hutchinsons, and um, we finally, to, to make a long st uh, real long story very short, we were to meet a banker uh, one Thursday at 11 o'clock. We were late, so when we got there, we, uh, uh, he said, I can't go out. He says, I'm going to send you to the realtor that I have the land listed with. We, went to, we, we uh, went to the realtor. The realtor took us out to look at this land, and we were, our, our look for land was based on the country living where she says that to get the land that God chose for Jesus, where the place where he lived, was in the Galilean hills, the rolling hills, valleys, waters, and, and labor, and what have you. So we were looking for land based on that, 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 uh, that uh, description. And I actually formulated a picture in my head. And so, because, uh, and we've been now looking for a year over a year. And so when we looked at the land that the banker had, I said, no, that's not it. And so I asked her a question since she was real. I said, do you have any more land that we could look at? And she says, this is what the realtor said. She says, there's another piece of land mm -hmm. being listed by another agent in the office right now. Because I asked her that question at 2 o'clock. And another agent was uh, meeting someone 
on this property we're on right now at 2 o'clock. And she says, I think, she says, I understand it's a nice piece of land. And when she says, I understand it's a nice piece of land, a voice spoke in my head and says, that's your land. Wow. And it was solid. And I knew it was the voice of God. She says, I don't know where it is. She says, but to, uh, when I get back to the office, I'll find where it is and, and, and I'll get back with you. She got back to the office. She let us, told us where it was. I mean, you know, and she said, I'll meet you Friday. We met Friday at exit 14. She had a map which she did not, did not, didn't know how to read. So Hutch and I got in the car. And we drove. We made the turn right down here. Everybody know where it is? We went on the Nevada. Out. And I said, no, Hutch, this is not it. Let's back up. So we backed up and came on over the hill. And as we're going over the hill, I'm, sp I'm sp talking to Hutch. I said, Hutch, I said, look like we should be getting close to this land. And by that time, I looked to my right. Saints, this actually happened. The picture that I had formed in my head was now laid out before me in reality. The exact picture. Mm, mm. I thought I put the picture there. <laughs> but God put the picture there. Amen. This happened. Amen. And, the, and the picture I had was I didn't want the house to be right on the, on, on, on the road. I wanted to be a little drive to go up to the house. I wanted to kind of sit on a little knoll. Well, there was two chimneys sitting up there where our house is right now, where the, house, the other house had burned down. That was it. So we, we walked it just real quick. She said, do you want it? Yes, we want it. She said, you need to put out some earnest money. We wrote $200 check with nothing to back it up. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Now, we wrote the $200 check because they don't cash earnest money checks. We went to the banker. He said, you need $10,000 to pay down. $10,000? Like $10 million. I just, and, and people in this room that know what went on. Oof. There's one sitting right there. She knows exactly what went on. <laughs> With the, the, the closing was set for 45 days later. About 35 days later, they called and canceled the closing because of some technical legal maneuver that wasn't quite fixed. And my wife says, why are they, why are they uh, not having a closing? Why, why are they closing? I said, because we don't have any money. <laughs> now, Brothers and sisters, they reset it for 15 days later. So within those, that time period, God rained some money out of this guy. Wow. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Now, I don't want to call a name, but someone sitting in this audience came up with some money. Mm. And then someone else <laughs> came up with some money. And said, the Lord gave us some jobs, and we came up with eight or $9,000 within that time period. Mm. It just came out of nowhere. Now keep in mind, brother, we're going to be giving actually testimonies in about 30 minutes. Yes. So we can give all the nitty-gritty details. Yes. So Amen. I'm just telling you, it, it happens. Amen. And when, so when we went to closing, when we told the, 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 the bank how much, he said, okay, if you got that much, I'm going to let you go ahead and do it. And then, you know, guess what? I got to tell you this. You know what the banker told us? He says, hey, when I came out here and looked at this land. Mm. Now, this is, I'm, just, like, I'm just telling you like he said. He said, he said Moses... He said, I like you, boy. <laughs> he said, because if I didn't like you, you wouldn't get this land. Mm. He said, I got this land myself. Are you hearing me? So when God does it, yes. look here, I got to tell you this part. <laughs> this land, the, the for sale sign never went up. Everybody was looking at this land. They wanted to buy it. It was listed it, one day at 2 o'clock and the next morning at 8 o'clock. We had bought it. Wow. With no money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, this is a follow up question, and actually, it's for um, Brother Franklin. Okay, with no money, and someone up there was saying, and I'm with them, in Tennessee is 155 plus 12 degrees. How do you do that with no money, off the grid, no air? What about electricity, water, heat, and how do we survive without being able to make or spend money? Question. Yeah, it is. Um, the question is, how, how, how do we survive with the heat? Heat, no money, no air, no oh, well, off the grid. Yeah, we do that now. We, we don't have uh, air conditioning. We, uh, we open up the windows. <laughs> we have fans. We, we, we run fans, and we have, uh, we're off the grid. The, the, uh, we plug the fans in, and they work fine. 
Um, what was the other part? Mm -hmm. Right, no, no money. money. Well, yeah, we we're we living from month to month. We, <laughs> you know, we we do what we can each month. We 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 picture a project that we want to do uh, the month, mm -hmm. and we uh, when we get our uh, retirement, we put that money toward Amen. that. Amen. Okay. If it, if we can't complete it, then we finish it up the next month. Mm. But uh, it's an ongoing thing, and uh, we pray and ask God, and uh, He so far He's provided for us. Okay, and I guess this kind of goes in sync. This is from um, an email. I heard a video from David Gates urging God's people to leave the cities as quickly as possible due to things that will be occurring in September. I've already packed many things in our household but can't seem to move fast enough. I still have debt I'm paying down but feel for my family state sake that we have to move very, very quickly. We also still have to find a viable source of income and a country home. We are praying and wait, <coughs> excuse me, waiting on the Lord. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I want to say respectfully, first of all, there's a lot being taught about the fall of the dollar, the collapse of the dollar. People are teaching there's going to be a specific date next week. I'm not going to even call the date. Mm -hmm. Only God knows. Please don't get caught up in this. It's not in here. That date is not in here, and it's not in the spirit of prophecy. So man is creating this date. Whatever happened in the past, seven years ago, that's, God is in control. God is in control. As far as the income and et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. keep it before the Lord, present it, lay it before him, he will bless. We moved here, we didn't have any means of income as far as job is concerned. My, life, my wife stayed behind and worked a little bit. We got here, the Lord blessed me with a job. Mm -hmm. I, so it's gonna be very difficult for me to listen to you and hear that God can't do it for me because God will do it if you pray and allow him to bless you. If you're faithful, okay. he will provide. So, he will provide. So, in other words, move forward. Keep and moving. Faith. Yes. They're, they're, they're What's making the saying again? Don't delay. Pack and pray. I'm sorry. Start today. Okay. Don't delay. Pack and pray. Right. And they're doing the right thing. They're moving forward. Okay. Keep moving forward. Keep moving mm. forward. Amen. Okay. Um, when should I take my money away from banks? And of course, this one is from our, our live chat. Um, when should I take my money away from banks? Where will, be a, a, where will be a safe place to keep it when Christians who remain loyal to God can't buy or sell? <laughs> you will throw it in the street. <laughs> Listen, saints. Spend your money. Ask God to tell you what to do with your funds. But when no man can buy and sell, your money is worthless. And, and, and the prophet says... They will come now and rush upon to, to, to give it to somebody to do something with it. They say, sorry, we can't use it. Too late. Mm -hmm. So brothers and sisters, pray and ask God what to do. And people come to me, I say, I'm not a fine. You need to go to God. She says, lay every plan before God and the sure promise is he yes. will direct yes. that way. So mm -hmm. go to God and say, Lord, and, and listen, God will do this now. If you're honest, Lord, what would you have me to do with these funds? Amen. And God will tell you what to do. But when the son in law passes, you can just throw it in the street. Maybe you can make a fire with it. <laughs> okay, this is from our. But it would be a no good. Like, okay, from our live audience, what do I look for when trying to find country property? I'm always thinking agriculture. Food is a thing that's important oh. to me. So I would say. Well, it's according to what part of the country you live in, but I would say, from what I, I know of, I wouldn't have soil that's real rocky. Okay. Um, you find soil a lot of times that have um, a lot of rocks. I mean, so definitely you have to uh, grow stuff on top of the soil. Um, so I, I just think that when you're looking, look at a time, it's certain times you need to look. For one, I look for I look at land when it's raining, hmm. right? I look at it when it has rained a lot, and once the rain is gone, I look at the land to see if the water is still sitting on top of the land, or do it drain into you know drain real well, <coughs> because you got stuff that's uh, that's not draining well. F f number one, you're not gonna be able to grow anything on it. 
Number two, if you have to put a septic tank on it, it might not, what they call, perk, and you might not be able to put a septic tank on it. Three, it might be hard to build on it. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I look at. Probably the other thing I look at would, would uh, probably be um, just um, in the wintertime, I like to look at it. And that way I can tell if it's real rocky outside. Because in the summertime, you got the foliage growing, you got the grass growing. You can't see what's on the bottom. But in the wintertime, when the grass and everything die back, then you can see what's on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you can check the land out like that. And that's just, somebody else might want to add something else to it. But that's two of the things that I look for. Okay. Let me add this. From Deuteronomy chapter 8, this is what the Lord showed us after he had given us the land. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil, olive and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread with thy scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig bread. So God want to bring us into a good land. A land that can do all of these things and what have you. You want some water on that land. Amen. This is Deuteronomy chapter 8. You need to read chapter 8 verses 1 all the way down to, uh, just read the whole chapter down to verse 20. Good, very good. Deuteronomy. Okay. Carlos wants to know what should come first, the job or the country home? He just asked that. <laughs> pra practically speaking, practically speaking, I would say the source of income. Practically. But sometimes God overrides that mm. and the spiritual takes over. And again, Desire of Ages 668. Mm. God has a use for every one of us. What that use is individually, only God can answer that question. Mm -hmm. That was our plan to be as practical as, as possible the second time around. But God had other plans. He, he, mm -hmm. he redirected. He, he called an audible, literally. And he redirected our plans, and he said, no, I'm going to put you there first because I have something for you to do. Praise his name. So you're Amen. saying that observe providence also, not just yes. what your plan is. And the point is everybody's situation is different. You can't compare apples mm -hmm. and oranges. One person might be on retirement. Next person might be on medical, on, on uh, disability. Mm -hmm. Somebody else might have a family inheritance. Somebody else might have a house to sell in the city where somebody else is living in the projects in the city. So we don't know what everybody's case is. It's an individual matter with Jesus. Amen. Okay, this is a, well, all of them are really good. My church feels no need nor urgency to get out of the city. So what are some prophetic signs um, that are being fulfilled that makes you feel it is time to move to the country right now? Yes, sir. Watch the first night. And Sunday how do they watch the first night? On the pop right here. <laughs> right here. Uh, go to uh, apocalypseyoutube.com. You can Apocalypse get the Apocalypseyoutube.com. Yeah. All of them will be archived there for a while. And, and then you, you want your hard copy, you can go to the website and order the hard copy. Very cheap. You get the whole the hard copy of the whole set. But watch the first night. And just look at the signs of the time. We are prophetic people. Listen, when we see the agitation of the Son of the Lord, they know where, where, where we are. Look at what's about to take place. We are here. Okay, and someone has given a good suggestion also, and I think you've mentioned that in one of the seminars about, uh, it says Google the area, um, check for the news about crime in the area and so forth. Yeah, I don't want to do any marketing on the Sabbath. We have right. to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. But I, mentioned, I did mention a book the other night. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, we're almost at sun sunset, or we're getting we're getting close. We're getting close. So maybe I'll miss, or past sunset. Oh, we oh, praise close the Lord. Out the That's right. I, I okay. didn't realize the, the time. Okay. You'll close out the Sabbath. Let's, we can do that now. Yes. Okay. okay. We're going to close out the Sabbath together. Our blessed Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, praise, and honor and glory for blessing us through this wonderful Sabbath time. This time we spent with Thee on holy ground. We pray, Lord, if we had any offense to thee, whether it be conversation, our thoughts, our motives, our actions during this holy time that's passed, we ask forgiveness. That you would blot it out from your book, Lord, and write pardon against each of our names. If we dishonored you in any way, Lord, any way, sinned against you, transgressed your law, brought a frown upon thy countenance, we 
beg you, please forgive us, Lord. And wipe it clean, a clean slate that you no longer remember. Bless us for the next six days <clears throat> until the next appointed time, next Sabbath. Help us to keep our feet, Lord, trod on the narrow way that leads to eternal life. Help us also to be a blessing to others. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And this is sunset for us in Central Standard Time. Okay. So the book is called Sustainable Preparedness. It's a must-have. Sustainable Preparedness by Craig Meisner of Mountain Media Ministries. Mm -hmm. You have to get this book. And it, it really answers a lot of questions that were already asked today. I didn't want to mention it during Sabbath. And, of course, you also want to grab the book Country Living by okay. Ellen G. White, Country Living. But the book is Sustainable Preparedness, and you can find it at this website, okay. endtimepreparedness.com. Endtimepreparedness.com. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Answers a lot of questions about what to look for, how to get it, what you need, how much you need, okay. all that. Amen. Okay. Now, Sister Soyla, this one is for you. Um, for, you know, people, again, with money issues and so forth, and as we get to the time when we can't buy or sell, what about hygienic things, soap, toothpaste, um, laundry detergent? And well, this is a great question because this is something that I think that um, every woman or uh, a wife in a family should know and teach her daughters. Um, I purposed in my heart when I... Um, I caught hold of this message that um, I had to hone my skills in soap making um, and laundry soap making and anything that my family would need to be able to be self-sufficient. Um, there are a lot of websites out on the internet that you can access um, to make homemade soaps, toothpaste, deodorants. Um, hone those skills and um, start acquiring the things that it would take to make these things. And also, if you're able to purchase these things at a lower rate, uh, things like um, toilet tissue, um, these are things that you're supposed to start stocking up on if you haven't already, start stocking up now. Mm -hmm. um, it's better to have um, things on hand stocked up that when the crisis does come, you're ahead and not behind. Amen. Okay, as we're wrapping up, I've just got a couple more questions. Um, Sister Diana, um, this is in regards to... Um, not necessarily dress reform, but we want to know how do um, she stay prayerfully happy and single in the country and content without an Adam? <laughs> um, I, I think oftentimes we get um, distracted, and if we keep our eyes on Christ and understand that he's the only one that can lead you in everything. Mm. I, am, I am so contented with my life. Um, yes, I have a job that, that's very demanding, but I am so contented knowing that when I get up in the morning, my friend that I talk to is Jesus. Mm. You know, when I go, when I drive to work, that's who I talked with. That's who I, I, I cry to. And if we continue to watch him and just allow him to guide you, you don't, you're not in need of anything but him. Amen. So you're saying he's your husband? He is my husband. As the Bible <laughs> states. He takes care of me. Amen. Amen. Okay, as we're drawing to a close for our question and answer segment, if each one of you, and we'll start with you, um, Brother Dawkins, just give a brief, um, maybe one or two sentences of admonition, you know, within the area, like for you, agriculture and on, that you would advise each of us. Um, Brother Bridges. Okay, and then we'll just go, we'll just go around. And okay, if I would... Uh, leave you with anything, I would say this. Look at what's going on now. My church, um, hear me say this a lot. Look at what's going on right now when it comes to food. Uh, I think this, this week they had a big recall on cucumbers and things like that. And then you see about now about 90% of the wheat, corn, and soy that's on the market now is GMO. Mm. And I would say um, whether you're in the city or whether you're in the country, uh, learn to grow your own food. You can grow it year-round. 
it's not really as hard as everybody think. And you'll know what you're getting. You'll know that you are getting nutrient-dense food. Mm -hmm. And you know that it will be healthier for you in two ways. One, you're eating it. And two, you're outside exercising and taking care of it. And I would say, if I say nothing else, I would say do that. Start growing your own food. I'm going to piggyback a little bit on Brother Dawkins' statement. Um, being able to preserve your own food can be so fulfilling. Um, like he said, you know what's going into your food. You know that what, what, when you process your food, that it's processed in such a way that your family has all the nutrients, there's no preservatives, no additives, and your body feels so much healthier for it. Another thing is it's never too late to start. Start as soon as you can. Um, I had uh, the opportunity to come here about four years ago, maybe three or four years ago, and a gentleman had uh, spoken. He said that, um, you know, if you haven't started, it might just be too late. And I went home in my heart saying, Lord, I know this is coming. What do I do? Mm -hmm. and, my, and this is a testimony. I'd like to make it really quick because I know we're pressed for time. But my husband, he had uh, worked at a hospital, and they were giving away shelving that um, they used files for. And he was given five of them. And he brought them home, and they were so big. And I said, Lord, OK, they're so big. How are you going to help me fill these shelves? And you know, the voice said, one jar at a time. And before I knew it, my shelves were filled. And shortly after, my husband was laid off. And once he was laid off, there was no income. And the Lord had blessed us with all these canned foods, so we never even had to go outside of to, pre uh, to prepare for our family. And so right now, it, it's to start now and do the best you can to prepare for what's coming. Amen. I'll pick it back on both of you. Just educate yourselves. And remember, when you leave the city, you're, li you're literally ending one life and starting a brand new life. So everything we've talked about this whole week and everything up here so far in this segment, educate yourself on it. This is, you have to take this much more serious. This is serious mm -hmm. business. So you have to learn every aspect in and out because we're, God's trying to prepare people for the crisis and the second coming. Mm -hmm. Take it very serious and educate, educate, educate yourself and others. Amen. Amen. Um, for the ladies, again, going out into the country there are things that you have to be very careful mm -hmm. and I know oftentimes you know women will say well I, I I don't have the money to to do this and I don't have the money for the dress reform and there are practical things that you can do again um, it might not be something that you can do by yourself and we will offer that service to you but instead of getting rid of wardrobes, your, your, everything you have in your wardrobe, just look at what you can salvage and um, how you can lengthen or how you can put a skirt under um, a, a dress and, and still be modest and uh, not looking like the bonnet wearing or whatever. <laughs> um, there's so many things that you can do. So. Um, Think about what you have, lay out what you have, and um, what you probably even can um, donate or even sell so you can purchase something else that would be modest. I would say uh, moving to the country uh, will help everyone, uh, couples, I don't care how far uh, how mm. how far apart you are when mm. you get out here, living out here, living together, mm -hmm. and trust and trust and obey God will draw you closer together. Amen. And I can't I can't emphasize that enough. Amen. And one more thing, uh, uh, my brother was talking about the test that uh, the soil being clay and the water won't drain down. That's very important. A lot of people come out to the country and they don't realize that in order to have a septic system, you've got to have a perk test done on that soil. Mm -hmm. If that test won't uh, give you uh, a permit to put a sewer system in, then don't buy the land. Yeah. You need to 
to keep looking. That's not the land God has for you. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that, you know, we hate to bring this session to a close because I know there's so many more questions that Sister Summers have, but we want to use a, uh, don't want to wear the patience of the, of the uh, saints. saints here, nor the ones viewing by uh, the channel. So we want to, at this time, just come to a brief close so we can come back with the, uh, the personal testimonies. And in closing this session, I would say, brothers and sisters, this is real. We just happen to be the generation down here at the very end. And Satan has done, I'm not giving him any credit, but I have to give him credit. He has done a masterful job of deceiving us as a people. The, the things that I'm hearing most from the questions, we have a generation of Seventh-day Adventists that know nothing about what we're talking about. Never heard of it. They thought, well, I'm in New York, that's where I'm going to be. I'm in Boston, that's where I'm going to be. So I'm in Atlanta. They have no idea anything about moving out of the city. They're not prepared. This comes as a total culture shock to them. And so I'm saying, start praying. I mean, start praying. We have the admonition that we morning, evening, and noon will I pray, and then will he hear my voice. So your, your situation might be, it look, might look, be, look totally helpless and hopeless. But there's nothing impossible with God. Amen. I mean nothing. When God says that we have the faith of a mustard seed, you can speak to Yonah's mountain, it would be removed into the sea. That's exactly what it means. So I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what, how bad it is. Start praying. Mm. Plead with God. And then as you start praying, start obeying. My son brought this out this morning to Sub School, how we must obey. Start obeying everything that you know and see what God start moving some things in, you, in your favor. Yeah. And as we wrap up, I just want to encourage, you know, first of all, thank you so much to our friends live on the chat channel and for you all live in person. And um, we're going to have a lot more practical things. I mean, you're going to see her doing, making soaps and men, your car stuff and all of that. And um, just a lot of things. Um, you know, women, we're talking about trying to go natural and living in the country in the heat. And we're going to talk about how to keep the hair looking right. <laughs> you know, I mean, just really. So, so these practical things, we'll talk about weight loss. And I, I may even share my testimony at some point, at some point. Okay, I lost over 60 pounds in a very short period of time, and it was lifestyle change. It was not a diet. And actually, from March until the middle of July, I lost over 60 pounds, and I did not starve myself. I'll share all that. I just had to tell you because it was a spiritual thing. Amen. It was a spiritual thing. So all of that, please join us. We'll be right back with some serious testimonies. I'd just like to say one thing. Many have been asking about... Uh, Sister Bridges' presentation, we are going to yes. do a full presentation. She's going to do a full presentation on the dress right. so that we'll be coming up. And tell them about all of the series that they can get. Oh, yeah, you can get the whole series. Uh, you can, it's, it's, can pre-order it right now for $46. Uh, and it's, you might say, well, I don't need to do that. It's, it's on YouTube. We're going to take it off of YouTube after a while. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to get you a set. <laughs> you need to help us. You see, it, listen, this will support what we're doing. It takes Amen. funds to do this. This took a lot of money to do this. So we need your support. So we need your donations. We need you to buy a set of these things so we can have some funds. Not only to fund this one, but to fund the next one as well. Amen. Let us close with prayer. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being in charge and directing and leading this segment of the, the meetings this afternoon as we move into the sunlight, sunset hours, the twilight hours of this night. We pray that you would send angels aforehand before time to bless the, the final segment, the couples that are going to be giving the, presenting the, out, their own out of the city experiences, yes, yes, yes. which we know, Lord, greatly mm -hmm. encourages and motivates the brothers and sisters out there. Please bless it even as we're planning and preparing to do it. We love you so much, Lord. Thank you again. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord and welcome back to the Apocalypse Ministries Media Center. We're here, brothers and sisters, for the fourth and final segment of this afternoon's and this evening's session of the Out of the Cities webinar. 
This session, I believe, is very, very important and it's very special. I'm going to read something from the Word of God regarding this final segment tonight. It's found in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14, a passage that I'm sure, I'm certain that all of us are all very familiar with. Revelation 14, beginning at verse 1, verse 1. And the Bible says, And I looked, and lo, this is of course John, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Now we know from our study as, as prophecy students that that song is actually the testimony of the 144,000. And it's going to be a song or testimony nobody else can give because no other group in the history of mankind has or will have ever gone through the experience they're going to have. We're told in Great Controversy 649, it will be like the Song of Moses. It will be the song as of the Song of Moses. A very unique experience personal to themselves. So we believe in this final segment that the experience we're going to share with you from three families, they're out of the cities, moving to the country experience is very similar in nature because it's unique to them. We also find that it encourages other brethren and sisters to be able to have the faith and the strength and courage to do the same thing by God's grace. Amen. So I'm going to open with a prayer and then we're going to present our first family. Let us kneel and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of thy Son, thy, our Savior, our King, Jesus Christ, the righteous, we thank you again for being with us this entire week up to this very moment. For your Holy Spirit, Lord, has been in the midst of us throughout. We thank you for the angels. We thank you for their ministering to us. And we pray, Lord, that as we begin this final session, that you would continue to be with us, Lord. Remove us from the front of the cross. Put us behind it. Send us, Lord, truth, faith, grace, and mercy from heaven. We need it all. Bless us. Help us to speak, Lord, words that will strengthen and encourage the faithful. The commandment-keeping people of God is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So first, we want to introduce to you, reintroduce to you, giving their out of the city experience, and we're going to be very brief. We know the hour is getting a little late. We're going to introduce, reintroduce to you the Franklin family. Amen. Well, we want to share our testimony of what brought us out of the city. Well, I have to back up a little bit before I share my part. When I accepted this message, I accepted this message from um, a call porter. And uh, I did not know it at the time because I came from a Baptist background. And it wasn't really a real true Baptist, but that's all I ever knew, you know, was Baptist. And, uh, and I didn't know anything about Adventists, although I always wondered about the Sabbath. So all of those questions were answered. And I knew we were not a part of the organized church, but that didn't bother me because I knew we were doing what God required. We studied the spirit of prophecy, went through nine-month baptismal class before we were baptized so that we would know what we were being baptized into. We studied on Sabbath. I mean, you know, it was just one of those kind of uh, groups. But then something happened, and God brought me out of that. And uh, we moved to Atlanta. And I thought that I was ready to go to heaven. I just knew Jesus was coming the next day. And everybody that I met, I would tell them. But I found out later that God brought me out because I wasn't ready. And I came into Adventism, nominal Adventism. And I got lost. I stopped believing in the urgency of the message. And I just started laissez-faire. And then something was awakened in me. I was very involved in youth ministries, uh, especially the teens. And um, something awakened me, and I had a choice. God gave me a choice whether to continue in that ministry or come out. I came out of the ministry. And that's when God started talking to me. And I started 
Googling present truth because there was no place for present truth in Atlanta. People who say they were weren't really that. And then I started watching YouTube, and I told you I ran across Dave Westbrook, I ran across Jeremiah Davis, of course, Brother Mason, um, and I started hearing about country living, and I mean, I had already read it, but I thought it was those, you know, those are just words I just accepted. But when I heard that message by Dave Westbrook, and he compared us to the siege of Jerusalem, and when that Blair Bill, when A.T. Jones went and argued that thing down, that was like the army being withdrawn. And I knew that army came back from history, so I knew that was going to come back again. But I didn't connect it to that was the time, you know, that it was going to be over for us, the importance of the National Sunday Law. But God has used that truth to awaken me and put an urgency in me to get out of the city. Since we've been out of the city, I have learned that I'm so thankful he didn't come while I was with that group because I wasn't ready. I thought we were going our way to heaven. Also, I have learned to dig deeper in God's word since I've been in the, in the, in the country, since we've been in the country. Because what we, I'll let him tell that because he likes to tell this part. But uh, it has just shown me how God, how much God loves us and how much he wants to save us. And, you know, she says that we need an experience that we don't yet have. And uh, I want that experience. And I know I couldn't have gotten it in the city. I am getting it in the country. I know that I'm not there yet, but I know I'm not where I was before. So it just opens up doors and just gives you a deeper appreciation for truth. And you, and you learn to not surface read and surface, well, I wasn't even studying. It was just surface reading, or else I would have been out a long time ago because the words didn't change. They're the same. So that's what it's doing for me. Well, what it's doing for me is uh, it showed me, uh, first of all, coming into the, coming into the uh, Seventh-day Adventist faith uh, from a Baptist uh, was different for me. Uh, like I when I uh, first heard about Seventh-day Adventists, uh, I was in the Air Force uh, flying out of, out of Andrews, and uh, I was out in Texas going to school for uh, six or ten weeks, and uh, halfway through the school right at Shepherd Air Force Base, my, my wife wrote, writes me a letter and tells me, uh, when you get home, things are going to be a little bit different. There ain't going to be no meat on the table. So I, it, it was weird. It was a weird awakening for me. But uh, I, uh, since I, I thank God that she exposed me to this message because uh, I had been wrong all my life. And, and I grew up Baptist, but uh, just because I grew up Baptist doesn't mean that I have to continue in the Baptist way. It, when you have been shown the light, and uh, it's up to you then to do something about it and uh, it, it was time for me to do something about it and uh, I thank her and I thank her for showing me the light for showing me that God uh, loves me and that he wanted to he wants to save me. I, I'll be honest with you I had logged over 4,000 hours in the air as an air crew member in the Air Force uh, that might not seem like a whole lot to you but uh, if you ask Brother uh, uh, Ricardo, 2,088 hours equal one year of government service. So what that said, said to me is that I had spent two years in the air working hours of government service in the air. And uh, that's a lot of landing and a lot of taking off. And the only person that took care of me during all those landings and all those taking off, I, you know, I saw a lot of the world, but, I mean, that's a lot of landing and a lot of taking off. And I can't thank him enough. Every day I wake up and I, I tell you, I have to pinch myself and say, Lord, you, you must have something for me to do or you wouldn't have kept me going as long as you have. But we looked uh, back to the uh, moving to the country uh, 
thing. We 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 were in Atlanta and we looked in North Georgia and we we even looked in the Carolinas at Poland and West Virginia. West Virginia, yeah. We uh, and my wife Dakotas. Yeah. Because the population density there is there. Really yeah, low. It's that's all what white. That's, white spots. That's what we started looking at the population density, uh, mm -hmm. and that's what brought us here to Tennessee. Uh, the number of people per acre, uh, yeah, per acre. Uh, it, it was less here in Tennessee than in, any place else around. So we, uh, and, and like she said, we we went to Lobelville Church and uh, over over there, and uh, we spent the weekend at the uh, Best Western, and we the lady there told us that there's a Seventh Day Adventist Church in Lobelville, and we went there and. The day that we went there, uh, my wife got up and asked them to pray for her. We, we were looking for land in the area, and the guy that owned this property hadn't been there in over two years. And any church? Any church, and he just happened to be there that day. And he heard the testimony, and he contacted the pastor, and the pastor gave him our phone number. So... That's how we got where we are. That's how we ended up where we are. So. And then, you know, and one thing, there's a call to come back. For me, I hear a call to come back to primitive godliness. And in living in a primitive environment, it places me in more of a receptive mood for primitive godliness. This experience has really humbled me. I, uh, I don't know what else to say except, you know, just step on out on faith because God has the place for you. He has the work for you, and he will bless you. Trust and life. obey. That's it. Amen. Wasn't that beautiful? Can you see God's providence working there? No doubt about it. God was leading. Amen. Praise God. Our second testimony from a couple you all are very familiar with, uh, brother and sister Mason. You were on the clock. <laughs> now, this is a miracle in itself that I have my wife up here beside me <laughs> because she definitely does not want to be in fr up front. <laughs> so this is a miracle. Mag and I, when did we start looking for land? Oh. We moved out here in 89. We moved out here in 1989. In the late, uh, early 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Started about 1985. Yeah, somewhere along there. We came into church in 1976. So, and we, and believe it or not, like uh, Sister Franklin was involved in a, another group, we never, we were studying with them. We didn't actually join with them, but. There was a pull on us, but the Lord kept us, you know, through all this. But that's how we found out about country land. We didn't find out from the normal church. Nobody in the normal church talking about country living in that. We found out about living in the country from what we call <laughs> offshore. That's, right. that's, right. <laughs> that's how we found out about the, the, the need of country living. But then um, we started looking, and we would look, how often would we look? Well, every evening, but every weekend, we didn't miss the weekend, we would put the children in the car. They hated it at the time because they, they were, had grown up some in the city, mm -hmm. and uh, they were just supposed to, are we going today? Are we going? <laughs> we're going to look for some land. And then after a while, they just got quiet, and we just looked and looked and looked. And sometimes you would even think it would be a little discouragement, but we kept looking to see could we find some land. And we've passed here so many times. And there's, uh, I never thought we would be over here. I do remember that big house used to be over on the hill where our home is just up the road there, peace. But the Lord really did the work on us. And, and I knew when I came in this church I wanted something different for my children. Yes. I knew I wanted something different for my children. And I, w I grew up in the country, and I wanted them to grow up in the country. And there's just so much more freedom in the country. Testing, testing. 
Um, as I said earlier, when we finally, the Lord led us to this land, uh, we'd come out on a Thursday and met the banker, and, and we put thumbs down on the land that he was, uh, that was sh you know, showing us, at least showing through the real estate agent. And I asked the real estate agent, was there any other land that she had available, since she was a real estate agent? And uh, she says, yes, that's another piece of land, as I said earlier. And she said, and the voice loudly spoke to me and says, that's your land. And at this time, I had come to recognize the voice of God. And I knew this was, a, I didn't know where it was. But now, we had put thumbs down on a lot of pieces of land because it didn't meet the criteria. And so when we got here and saw this, it was the land. And you know, as we said earlier, how the Lord blessed to come up with that $9,000. And um, we actually moved here now. We didn't have it. It was just land. It was land. Uh, the spring was already, because someone lived here before, it already had the, the spring water there and had a tank for the water to come down in. But that was it. So now we need a home. And so now we're trying to figure out how to get a home. And uh, we looked. And as we looked, uh, I had to, searching around, determine that uh, Southern Energy mobile homes were the better built mobile homes. And so we started looking for a Southern Energy mobile home. We wanted a split plan. That is a bedroom on one end, two bedrooms on the other end. And so we had looked and looked and looked, and I was about, and we wanted a double wide. And I was ready to single, to sell for anything. And so I was ready to, I found a place where we could get a, a single wide for a little or nothing. And uh, I call it a do matilla. You know what a do matilla is? Do you till you can do better. <laughs> and so my wife said, no, let's look one more time. So we got up on a Thursday. You, you, you pick it, baby. We got up on the Thursday. I think we had $20 in our pocket. That's exactly right. And so we had gotten a paper. Birmingham paper. Birmingham paper. We drove all the way outside south of Birmingham with that $20. The Lord just kept putting that gas in the car. And to go to look at this uh, double-wide mobile home that was, had been in the field, I think, about two years. About two years. Every kind of person had put a loan in for it, and they didn't qualify. And so we went out there to see this uh, couple that had, uh, because they were moving someone else, and it, somewhere else and they had left this uh they were mobile living, home they were living in there. florence alabama mm -hmm. and so we saw it i said this is the one because it had to have work done on it and then we had to have money to move it we didn't know how we were going to move it because during that time it was about three thousand dollars or so to move, to move it and that's been about 26 uh going on 27 26, years yeah 26 years and we've well, been here this long when we went in the mobile home it was a split plan. It was a southern engine mm -hmm. with one bedroom on this side mm -hmm. and two mm -hmm. bedrooms on this side. That's right. And I said, Maggie, like she said, I like it. <laughs> and the, 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 the people, the, the couple that had it, their father was looking after it. And he says, he lives in Florence and blah, 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 blah. So we called him and he, we was going to go down the next <laughs> day. But on, when we left there, we said, we're going to date. Now, remember, we started off with $20. Oh. We put a little bit more gas in the car and drove from Birmingham to Florence. <laughs> we ate peanut butter and crackers. Yes. All the way down and back because we couldn't stop and buy any, anything. The $20 was in the tank. So the Lord just took us down there and we brought us back and, you know, that was it. I when mean, we, the Lord's good. When we got there, the man questioned us. He questioned oh. us like a lawyer. So finally he decided we was real. And he says, okay, I've been paying on this home for seven years, eight years. Mm -hmm. He was, and he tried to sell it many times and couldn't sell it because nobody could qualify to take up the payments. So he had got desperate and decided the next person, he was going to allow the next person to pay him and he would pay them the, the loan company. We were the next person. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Amen. So... He asked $500 equity. He had paid on it for eight years. 
he gave us that eight years that he'd paid on it for $500. And we started taking up the payments for $400.45 a month, paying him. Yeah. And he paid the, the mortgage and company. And that was a chance, too, because he could have run off with everything yeah. that we'd given him. Uh, he didn't have to um, do what he said he was going to do. So we had, to, we had to go in faith. And so then he says, but now it has to be moved within 30 days. And it's going to take $3,000 to move it. Oh. And saying it's too long for me to go into details, but within 30 days, we were down to the wire. And someone came to our house. We were living in Huntsville, and they said, we was telling them what had happened, that we had, uh, had gotten the land, and, and uh, we need to, had found this mobile home. And now this person, I don't want to expose people, but this person said, didn't have any money. They left here and went to California. They got back. We was telling them, she said, well, I got $3,000. We said, what? <laughs> Where do you get $3,000 from? <laughs> and, and she said, and I'll give you all the $3,000 if you all let me have a piece of the land. That's how we got the money to move them over home. Yeah. Saints, it's been, I mean, it's, it's a, it, we need to write a book. Because it was a miracle after miracle. I mean, after miracle. When we got here and got the mobile home in, and, and then after a little while, the wife said, well, we need to enlarge this. We got in and we started working in it. First of all, take the trees off the walls. Yeah, the, you know, mobile homes. with oh, how the, panic attacks. <laughs> you know, have the paneling. So we, 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 we had it. We sheetrocked it. We, yeah, we did all of this. So this is a mobile home we live in up there. It's just a, a mobile home that's been added to them. The roof has been raised and what have you. People say, well, how do you get this out? No. This is a mobile home. Uh, so when we did the addition on the mobile home, we was looking. I had a person to come out and say, you know, give an estimate of what it was going to cost to, to, to do that addition. He got up to $18,000 in lumber. And we said, okay, we can get it. We can't do that. So the Lord impressed me, run an ad for used lumber. And to make a long story short, a man called me. He said, how much lumber you need? I said, I don't know. I have a 60-foot mobile home, and we want to add across the back. He said, oh, I got a lot more lumber than that. He said, meet me on Governor's Drive. Met him on Governor's Drive at a lumber company that had closed down. I can't think of the memory. It was a cut on Sutherland. Sutherland Lumber Company had closed down. They still had the lease, so the building was still there. He, now the lease was up, and he had the contract to tear the building down. He said, I'll sell you the whole store, the, the, the store, for $500. This happens, things. He said, I'll take my boom thing here, the demolition thing, and I'll gently knock it down so y'all can get the lumber out of it. Then he had all these big, long buildings in the back that housed lumber. You, you know, two by, two by sixes, 24 feet long, two by tens, two by eights. Listen, <laughs> sold us a whole building for $1,500 myself. Ralph Rowan, he's gone now. He was here earlier. He, was, he could testify to this. Charles White, some of you all know Charles White. We all went in together $500 a piece and bought that building. We got enough lumber out of the, the front building. I bought the front building for 500 and the back building to build houses. He built a house out of this. So we did a whole edition with used lumber. God is good, saints. We, we, we tore it down and we built the edition with used lumber. So this has been a miracle, all, just a miracle all along. So we'll just stop it right there because we know for time we got one I more. Have to say something. Okay, go ahead. I don't talk very much, but when I get up here, I do talk. <laughs> but what I want to thank the Lord for is helping me to be humble. And be in the background, but I do a lot of work. You yeah, never man. see me up here. You never see me doing a lot of stuff. But I try to make it with the Lord's help yeah, run man. smoothly. But I want to tell you, ladies, because I, I had a big house in mind. I had sketches and graphs of the house. Because I, I was, worked at the University of Alabama. And so I was going to do all of this and all of that. And then we get, saw... I mean, the Lord just bring you down because I saw I needed to get my children out and everything and different things happen. And so it bring you down for thinking big. 
you think of what the Lord wants you to have, mm -hmm. not what you've seen in magazines and not all of that, but the Lord will give you what you can handle. Yeah. And I just thank the Lord for giving me that. And, I, and every weekend, I had so many children from the academy out here. Yeah. We made, this time of night, we made homemade pieces and things for the children as they were growing up until they bought their school clothes and they went home on Monday after school. So it was, a, the children started loving it after then. They were just saying, when can we be at the house by ourselves? Because <laughs> all the children would be there, boys and girls, and we had to watch. and Coming out from the city. Coming out from the city and play some this place. Me and Moses would be, be tired. Our eyes would be open. We had to watch the children. <laughs> and, but I knew where mine was. So that was an important thing. So I just want to thank the Lord to always keep me humble. Because he does everything. You do nothing. Everything is we God. can't even breathe without the Lord. And, and we're just nothing without him. I just want to be saved in his kingdom, and I want to meet the son that is sleeping in the grave now. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. You know, when I just say this in closing, um, you would have never, ever told me that this is what we would be doing. No way. I mean... This is a this is a ride. We're just riding. We don't know. I mean, which way God is going to turn next? We have no idea. No. You know, it's, this is all God's doing, and so we're just trying to say, Lord, please lead us, guide us, direct us. This Amen. is uh, everything. Everything is yours. Land, house, this building. We don't know how this building got here. I mean, you th people think you got money. Uh -huh. God has money. Literally, don't have no money. We don't know. It's, it blows my mind that this building is here. I don't know how it got here. I mean, I, I mean, literally, I don't know. It's just a matter. So God is able to do anything. He just asks us to be obedient. It's uh, like, go ahead. Oh, like Sister uh, Franklin, uh, Brother Franklin would say, we live month to month. Yeah, we do. Everything comes in this ministry goes to this ministry. Yes. Even, the, even the stuff that we sell, we live off of what we draw once a month. Yeah. And I just thank the Lord. We said when we had this ministry, monies would be put where they're supposed to be put. And we never wavered. Amen. Amen. Speaking of that, some of uh, I'm already getting emails about the, uh, uh, the series. So just go to our website. Go to our website and pre-order the series. Just go to our website, www.apocalypseministers.org, and the, the series is already listed there for $46. So if you want this series, just go there and order it, That's, uh, and then we'll be getting it to you next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Can you see that God still is in the miracle, miracle performing business? Can you also see that leaving the city is very hard work? It is hard work. It is not easy. I'm going to ask my bride to please join me. We're going to share our very brief out of the city's experience. Uh, this is unrehearsed, so please bear with us. We're going to do this in about 10 minutes. Amen. Um, Yes. So we baptized into the faith in 19... Our, our entire testimony is very, very long, so I'm gonna, we're going to condense it. I thought we were just talking about moving to the country. We are. Okay. We're going to start in 1990. Okay. You can see we're married, can't you? <laughs> so in 1998, we baptized in, and we weren't hearing anything about country living at all, not even health, really, no. in the churches. And um, we started hearing about it and talking about it around 2003, 2004. Mm -hmm. So we started casually looking, casually, and uh, on the internet, and the next year came 2005, we thought we were gonna go look somewhere, and we didn't. Next year came 2006, couple more years. But all the research we did led us to Georgia and Tennessee. We narrowed it down to two states out of all 50, basically. We looked everywhere. We felt we could get there. And again, that's not saying come to Tennessee, that's saying at that time, 2008, 2009, it was the place where we could get the most land for the least amount money. of money, basically. So we, we actually put our feet in the water. We bought plane tickets. We're going to go to Tennessee. We're going to go to Georgia and look. So we went to Georgia, stayed at a relative's house, looked around Georgia. We didn't feel Georgia at all, not at all. Drove to Tennessee, 
and looked around for about a week. It, all together, it was two weeks. Mm -hmm. Struck out. Looked up at about maybe what twenty properties or whatever. Yeah, I didn't like Tennessee either. Yeah, and that, that was the western side. We didn't. Yeah. We weren't just weren't feeling the western side for whatever reason. Went back to L.A. This was um, June of 2008. So October, we drove out. Remember that? We drove the van out. Mm -hmm. Tennessee again, looked around, didn't find anything, struck out. Came back, flew again in January 2009. It was cold. Remember that? When we got off the plane, it was, oh, we yeah, went it was to the crazy. mall. Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, we had to go to J.C. Penney and buy coats. Because yes, and hats and all that. We're from California. It was... We didn't ex I think it was what, almost 25 degrees? It was, it was or colder. We were like, I'm about to pass out. We were used to palm, <laughs> we were used to palm trees in the winter, right? I mean, you know, it is what it is. So uh, all, we looked at uh, several homes in January 2009. Yes. And we got down to the last house on the list. All together, 70 houses. This was the 70th house, I kid you not. Right. Went to this house, and we said, you know what, this has some potential. I think this is it. Well, first, before that, we were at the hotel, and I said, I don't think the Lord wants us to speak. Yes. I said, yes. We, we've looked at all these houses. That's right. And I'm tired of looking at houses. And if he wanted us to have a house, we'd have a house. You're right. And I started doubting, too. And I'm, all, I'm the ultimate optimist, you know, as far as the faith is concerned. No, God's going to work hard. He's testing us. He's, he's, he's making sure we're patient. But I was even like, you know, with all this money, traveling, hotels, food, airlines, it's like. It's, it's, it was getting expensive. It was, you yeah. know. So, but we, this, we found this house, and we said, this is it. So we actually found it online, actually. And I talked about that the other day, bidselect.com. It was a foreclosure. Right. So, um... We got it at a decent price. She wants you to put your mic closer. Then we left, and... So we got, the, we got the house. We were there for a little over a year. Family owned us. We wrestled. We moved back to L.A. Very right. confident we'd be back in the country very shortly. Well, yeah, we said six months. Six months. The Lord will get us right back. We're just taking a little break in L.A., a little vacation. Four and a half years. <laughs> Four and a half years. Yeah, and it was difficult to get back. Yeah, it was Because tough. you have to work... And then yes. you have to have an income to qualify for a home loan. There's so many factors involved for us. Yes. And then, uh, of course, we had an ill family member that uh, we were looking after. So it was difficult. So yeah. time just went away and life started happening. And right. Get kind we of were looking in. the whole time. Don't get me wrong. Yes. But uh, we just couldn't find nothing. Nothing was there. We kept coming for trips out here to try several to find Several trips something. to Tennessee. Several Stay with the Franklins. They'll tell you many times many at times. the fireside. Amen. Many That's times. Right. And, uh, again, hotel, stayed at meet ministry a few times, and just, look, just looking, looking, looking right. on the Internet just continuously. Couldn't find it. God wouldn't open, it wouldn't open up for whatever reason until things started to turn last year. All right. Well, prior to that, we'll just say that we looked for years and years, and um, we had been watching Apocalypse periodically. We finally met Brother Mason and his wife, and um, Ellen was asked to speak at one of the camp meetings, in, in Southern California. In, in, um, no, out here. Out here. Right. And then the next time, um, prior to that, we, we uh, worked with them in L.A. Brother Mason came to speak, and we met with him as well. And so uh, last year, he was invited to speak at the camp meeting. And um, Brother but, Ricardo. Right, but before that, we decided to, we heard Sister Aretha Davis give her testimony at the church in Fontana. Right. And she gave a children's story, and she went into a thing about, Packing. How their how the city's experience began with them packing all their stuff up. They packed everything up. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yes, that's, that's a very important component. Right. That was prior to him speaking at last year's camp meeting. Right. So we packed our whole house up. Right. He drove it to Tennessee because we already had a uh, storage in Tennessee with our prior home. So we just added it to right. it. And so we left everything there. We, we, we didn't have anything. We, we slept on blow-up beds. We had paper pegs and cups. We didn't have anything. Nothing. We just kept a few things that we knew we weren't going to take with us that we would give away when we left. Yes. So um, We were saying, in essence, Lord, we're serious and we're going to have no furniture. We're showing you how serious we are. We're right. sacrificing everything on the altar right. because we want you to move on our behalf. Right. So a few months later, Elvin went to the camp meeting and then I was... Um, <coughs> in the <coughs> corridor, and uh, Brother Ricardo said, said, Sister Bridges, are you guys still looking for a property? And I said, yeah. And so he says, uh, Brother Mason knows where a property is. And I said, he does. So we went and got Elvin. He was talking to somebody. And we went to speak with Brother Mason. And so he asked Brother Mason, <coughs> Brother Mason, I don't know about our property. <laughs> and he said, yes, you do, yes, you do. And then he explained and told him where it was. And he says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He says, mm -hmm. uh, stay behind, and then we'll go look at it. So, right. so it's about two, the camp meeting ended. This mm -hmm. was 2014, last year. Right. So the camp meeting ended. We, we went to stay with them. Yeah, we stayed with and Betty then, and Horace. And then we 
Went to their house two days later. Right. We had a be- beautiful country breakfast. Amen. And, and I, I just that. would like to say we were late. When uh, they were waiting for us for breakfast. And they waited for us, praise Patiently. God. Patiently. We walked in the door, Brother Mason said, how you doing? Let's eat. <laughs> and Sister and Maggie had already noon. eaten. She said, she said, she had already eaten. She said, I couldn't wait. Amen. <laughs> so we went to see this property. We drove onto the property. And it, well, there was a, a gate. We opened the gate because it wasn't locked, Correct. We yeah, drove on no, no, the, it was open because we drove onto the property. That's right, and we drove a certain distance, and we didn't want to go too far because there were no trespassing, and we weren't sure if it was vacant or not. Right. So, again, we're making a very long testimony short. So we all decided to stand on that land, and we prayed. Brother Mason prayed for us. Yes, and we asked God, he asked God, if this is what you want the Bridges family to have, you have to open the door, and we're going to put our feet in the Jordan River, the Red Sea, and we're going to claim it in the name of Jesus. If you want us to have it, Lord, it's your house. You have to make it happen. And we were looking at this house and this land like, it was like we, we can't handle all this. Not only that, you know, when we were looking for a home, we were looking for what we could afford. That's and right. during Brother Mason's prayer, he said, don't worry about the price of That's the, right. bill, the, the home. He said, if God wants you to have the home, he'll give you the home. That's right. So we began to pray for the home if it was his will. So after that, um, brother, we left and we went back to California. Back, right. And Brother Mason was trying to find the person who owned the home for us just so we could make a contact. So he went several times throughout the um, the weeks to try to see if he could get somebody for us. Mm-hmm. And then the, there was a, a gentleman on the road. Yeah, ironically, you probably remember maybe a year and a half ago or two years where he was talking about a sister from St. Croix that came out, found a, a property, got a great price on it, and et cetera, et cetera. He was there looking at or doing something for her at her property. and He came same, out, right. and there was a man there in the car. Right, and right. My he flagged him down. Right. And Brother Mason happened to be on the phone with my husband at that time. And so Brother Mason gave the telephone to, my, to, my, um, to the gentleman to speak to my husband because the gentleman told Brother Mason that the home was for sale. Right. So long, long story short, I contacted the guy a few days later. He was a very old elderly ex-judge, ex-attorney. Ex, he was a real estate guy. He gave me the owner's information. So I, I wrote an old-fashioned letter, snail mail. Mailed it to the owner who happened to live in Florida. She responded right away. She emailed me. I told her, we're the Bridges family. We're from California. We're interested in discussing your property. So she emailed me right away and said, let's t- basically, let's talk. So that began the process of negotiation. Right. And so the house, we found out, was vacant for six years. Have mercy. It's like the Lord had his hand over it. Six years. Mm-hmm. And so we went back and forth, on and on. All these things had to happen. Had to get this fixed, that repaired, this inspected. All these different elements had to take place. And it was a miracle. It was a miracle. And basically, nine months later, it was birthed, right? We it moved, was birthed. We, moved, we, we got everything got approved. And mm-hmm. we moved here. We left California March 31st this year. Right. And it was a blessing because we were able to get approved for the home, but because of the technicalities through the banking systems, the land was more valuable than the home. So we had to cut it in half. We had to cut the lots in half so that we could get the property. But the point is, is that the Lord worked it out. Amen. Because we thought that we weren't going to get it because of that. Right. And there were so many delays that we kept saying, Lord, yes. is this house for delays. us? Lord, is this house for us? And it was for us. Right. Amen. So we got the house, and I'd just like to tell the viewers that we put zero down. Amen. <laughs> so Amen. G- God gave us a home free and clear. Yes. So he can give you a home just like he gave us. Amen. And even though we had an urgency to leave the city, I just started to say, you know what? This house is working on my nerves, and I'm not going to worry about this house no more. That's right. We got to that point. So the, it's in God's hands. And when we did that, every time we pray, the door would open wider. Mm-hmm. Then the door would open wider. Mm-hmm. And then pretty soon, we finally came down and made the agreement and purchased the home and in remember April. At, at one point, it was dead. I forgot I called Brother Mason. I said, Brother, it's over. You know, it's, it's, it's a dead deal. Right. And I called you, and I told you that what the realtor had said. And you said, no, not the realtor, the, the broker. So, and you said, no, it's not dead. Let's pray. I remember that. Remember that Amen. day? So we just said, we got home, opened up the laptop, put the picture up, and we just laid prostrate and we prayed. And Amen. we begged God we, for all that night. We begged him. 
Lord, we've come too close. All these months and all of a sudden we're going to let Satan close the door? No, 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 no. Lord, you are more mighty than him. You created him. Right. We want, we want to move out of the city right now. You know our, our hearts. And so God, re he, he reopened it. It was a miracle. And during that entire time, the owners of the property uh, said the property was for sale, <coughs> but they would not let anybody buy it until they were absolutely sure that we could not get yes. it. They gave so us they, right of they held it for months for us. And even though things would go sour or they appeared to be going sour, they were still patient. And they would not sell it to anybody else because a lot of interest had begun in the property once they put it up on the Amen. Internet. Amen. But they held it for us, and they worked with us all the way. Yes. So we know that, that it was the providence of God for Elvin to go speak at the meeting, for Ricardo to tell us about the home, mm. for Brother Mason to go and try to look for somebody, meet a stranger on the road, be on the phone with my husband at the same time, give him the phone so he could talk to my husband, and then we find out that the people are selling the home, but we couldn't uh, get them on the phone or anything. We went on the Internet, went to the county assessor's office, yes. mailed them a letter, they responded, and now we have a home. Amen. So that, those channels are unusual, so God wanted us very to Very unusual. Home. Yes, very, what's, in, what's very interesting to me is that I remember you did the meetings in Alabama a few months back, for that week and we were watching we tried to watch most of those meetings if we were at home right and i remember seeing certain faces in the meetings that now we're great good friends with right sister Amen. mccoy sister rose brother rayvon Amen. they were all at the meetings we're like oh i remember them from the from the <laughs> from the meetings in alabama you know the faces all look familiar so Amen. god is awesome again we claimed as our of ages 668 paragraph one we did much praying and i just want to convey to the, the watching off audience we're nobody special we're nothing Dirt, dust, and sinners. Amen. God all, did it all. All you have to do is read the spirit of prophecy, read the Bible, and believe. Praise God. That's your charge. Praise God. Amen. That's why we have to get out. It is your duty, parents, it is your duty to cut off every influence, to break up every habit, to sunder every tie that keeps you from the most free, open, and hearty committal of yourselves and your family to God. Cut them off. How do you cut them off? Get to the country. <laughs>